This is another one of the, uh, you know, hey, I worked on something, and if it was worth spending time to figure out how to make it work, then it's worth spending time documenting what I did so that other people when I'm gone, or other people in general, can uh, don't have to think of the same thing. And there are a million diagrams out there around how Verizon Files works, but none of them worked for me, and I'll show you the little changes or what I needed. Actually, it's just some text I needed. So here's the diagram. Um, probably a couple things I didn't realize about Verizon Files is that it's a two-box system for the ONT, optical network terminal, and that's where the optical cable is turned into copper. In mine, there's one outside that then a uh, cable TV coax comes off of. And another one inside that's got a little four wire, eight wire, and that gets turned into an ethernet cable. Um, and it turns out that's the WAN connection. So what's the big deal about this? All right, so uh, let's just do, you know what, let's do the WAN side first. So the ethernet cable comes in and it's a WAN connection. That's my one gigabit and the Fios gateway my Fios gateway has coax, WAN port, LAN ports, and Wi-Fi. It's got four different things on it. And the WAN port basically is comes in, it's hooked to the gateway, and then in my case, um, and then you have the option of connecting things either hardwired to the LAN ports or to the built-in Wi-Fi, and this gateway has got a built-in gateway in it, and that protects you like a firewall. And so anything sitting on the LAN or Wi-Fi ports of this thing are isolated from the WAN uh, from traffic coming in from the land, bad traffic coming in from the land, right? Now, the weird thing on this thing, and, and then on the other side, we have a TV service with a coax splitter and a Verizon tuner. In this case, I think it's a VMS 4100. And this is actually how I busted this thing. Um, so when I moved the box, it was like, oh, look, there's the TV cable signal. I think I'm cool. This, I thought these tuner boxes either talked back on the cable, back to the head, or they, I thought at one time, uh, they some of them talked Wi-Fi to the gateway, and they were had to know the password of the gateway. And if you broke it, and why do you need that? Like I'm doing uh, direct, uh, what do you call it, uh, on demand. I'm doing um, well, maybe not on demand, but but yeah, basically anything that's got to talk back to the head unit, right? So we're gonna do DVR, we're gonna do on demand, we're gonna buy movies, we're gonna do embedded apps, whatever it is, and. So what happens is this thing uh, may or may not connect to the network of Wi-Fi, but mine didn't. And it turns out that these gateways have the ability to take Ethernet and on the WAN. And if you were under 100 megabit, you didn't have to use a WAN bit cable. Instead, the TV on the same coax that the TV service was on, if you were 100 megabit or less, this thing was a mocha and you could basically get Ethernet on this gateway over coax, right? And so I didn't think I needed that because I'm gigabit. So why would I need that? I got gigabit coming in on the Ethernet. It ran great. And it turns out that this tuner box, if it's not, has to talk to this gateway somehow. So if it's not connected by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, it's actually doing the Mocha signal thing, right, onto the cable. And because we're at a fiber bridge here, that can't actually go back to the head. What it does is it looks like, and I'm sure somebody will correct me, but it turns out it actually uses this cable box coax ether connection to talk through the gateway back to wherever it needs to talk to. So if you, what will happen is all your ethernet will run fine if you just have this one path on the ethernet cable. And your TV box will say, hey, I actually have a connection if you've only got this signal. But when it actually tries to boot up and you try and, when it tries to get the programming, it can't if you don't have this 100 megabit or less, what ostensibly was for 100 megabit or less. But it looks like it's just a back channel on this. And I thought the way these splitters work, this would be kind of isolated, but I guess the isolation between these is small enough that it can communicate back low enough that it can communicate back through this to the coax and then over the wind. And then in this one here, I've actually got an extra, I've got a couple devices in the closet on this thing, uh, actually a hub, and, and I've got a wireless, um, mesh or a Wi-Fi repeater sitting upstairs on an Ethernet cable from this thing and that's got its own LAN and its own Wi-Fi and then these wireless devices in the house can either connect over Wi-Fi to this gateway or they can connect to the upstairs hub. Um, the only other thing I think that's probably important is, I put, I should have put it on here, this TV is also Wi-Fi or Ethernet and so if you have a smart TV or a tuner box 
then they just appear like one of these other devices. They can either be Ethernet connected or they can be Wi-Fi connected. But that's only this. The tuner box itself needs this coax connection. And that's under five minutes. Have a great day.